All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. MIG Frost versus Xenix Storm. Xenix will be playing in the blue at the bottom left of the map and at the top right of the map in the red. We're going to have MIG Frost. And it looks as if MIG is just fanning out to cover their whole jungle to watch our locations, whereas Xenix is preparing for some invasion and they're actually going straight up the top lane. And Kennen looks like he's going to actually come to his bush. Okay, never mind. I He'll be he was okay. Keep going. Yep. yep. So they're all hiding that bush, hoping someone will face check it, or someone will wander out there to check the river. The problem with this idea from Xenix is that Gungwoon with Kennen, uh, he's gonna have a free shuriken that he can just throw out there and check the bush, uh, as long as he's not being completely reckless. Yeah. Uh, so an interesting thing we see is that, that Horo has actually grabbed Flash on his Doctor Mundo. We've seen a lot of uh, smite exhaust because uh, with Doctor Mundo you don't need to be quite as mobile. Uh, but he's choosing to have that flash instead, so we'll see how that actually comes into play. Possibly to try to get into uh, the Cataclysm of Jarvan or away from it, depending on how the situation is working out. So you can yeah. not force uh, the, the ultimate to be cancelled as that early as it needs to be. be oh, oh, they're setting up their outside of it. The stun! They had a stun on Gunwoom! Oh, the flash goes off the lightning rush as well! Can he get away? No, the Cleaver slows him down, and first blood is drawn by... Xenix, wow, that was actually really cool. That was so, so well done. Hiding in the blind spot so Kennen could not see them in that bush. That was beautifully executed. Yeah. Just blindly throwing that Really nice there. positioning. That's going to make it a little bit more dangerous for anyone to sit in the tri bush in the future uh, whenever you're playing against <laughs> an Anivia. That Just that long range flat wow. boss is just so versatile. That was uh, cool. Showing the power of it already before the two minute mark. Unfortunately for Xenix, uh, Leona actually got the kill. However, everyone on the team got an assist. It's not too bad. It's still a little nice advantage for them to have going into the early lane phase. Yep. And uh, so Mundo's gonna go ahead. Looks like Mundo was like going back to his wolves when he's like, oh wait, it's already the two minute mark. I should just go straight to blue. <laughs> gonna take that blue out pretty quickly here. And what is going on down here? Uh. I just realized Corky is top, and it's huh. Leona Jarvin on bottom. We have a kill lane, ladies and gentlemen, being run by Xenix. Yeah. Look at this, even getting a, a a vision ward so they can clear out the ward in that bush so that Leona or one of the other can continue to camp in that bush. This is really cool. Yeah, because they were able to get that early, uh, or Leona was able to get that early kill that does give Corky a slight advantage in the top lane, so he'll be able to hold his own against Kennen for a little while. Uh, and, and then also having that extra vision ward and the sight wards uh, is going to make it so that... What is going on? We're having a little bit of a lag here with the observers. Yep, uh, the observer well. is lagging out at the moment. So we're going to try to cast from oh, okay. the big screen behind us. Uh, just a little bit of normal laning going on. It's a little hard for us to see oh. the minimap. And we're back. Okay, cool. Are Sorry we? about that. No, we're not. Oh, we're not. No, we're not. Uh, right. We do actually have a gank coming up here on top of Mugo. Oh, he misses his bandage toss, and Cor uh, Corky is able to Valkyrie away. A little unfortunate, but that's going to put a little bit of scare on him. They can play a little bit safer. Uh, meanwhile, MIG Frost is actually pushed up on the bottom lane, and we are back into the game. All right. Sorry <laughs> about that, ladies and gentlemen. I had to turn around. It was like being in the movie theater, being in the front row, <laughs> looking up. <laughs> Looking, still feel really like you're looking up the see. nose of the movie stars. So I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but SBS did actually have to dodge away, so he used a couple of his abilities, but he still has a really high mana. Yeah, he still has uh, so his flash up too, actually. In a really nice shape. He's also a level ahead of Kennen at the moment uh, because of that early experience he got with the kill. That was such a sweet kill. So yep. anyway, so we do have in the bottom lane, it is uh, just being played as kind of a bruiser lane. Leona is kind of playing the support role. She's not getting too many last hits, just a couple here and there, and is mostly being supportive for May, who is going to be going ahead and playing Jarvan as the carry. Very, very interesting, though. This is kind of cool. Yep, and because uh, oh. Lokodoko has Graves and he can stay mobile and away from both May and Impact, uh, we see that Mad Life doesn't need to use 
help picks on Lokodoka to be able to save some of the damage. So she's actually been poking a lot yeah. against both Impact and Mei. But they're able to keep the regeneration up, so they're doing a nice job with that Bruiser lane. Uh, able to get a lot of CS as well, 23 to 26. Not too bad considering that Jarvan is a melee champion. Yeah, well, the, with that assist, they were able to come to lane with uh, a little bit extra money, mm -hmm. uh, an extra potion, basically. And this is going to be really cool. Basically, if, if Leona can land her Zenith Blade, which is her dash move that can bring her to an opponent, then uh, Jarvan can also do the same thing with his standard. He can dash to an opponent, yep. too. So, so they have the ability to just basically jump on someone and do a ton of damage. Oh, they might be doing it right now. Is she going to land Zenith Blade? Nope. Lokodoko. Quick yep. draws away from that. And Mad Life was able to use Glitter Lance to just keep them from getting within range. But this is going to be really interesting to see because we see a lot of the mana from... Oh, and they're actually going to go back. They realize that they're in a slightly dangerous position. Uh, needing to grab his orange blade and some boots on Lulu so that she can get into the right position yep. uh, and out of the wrong ones. But uh, once Impact and May hit level 6, that's going to be a really, really scary combination. Oh, yeah. When they can chain all of their abilities oh, to just keep the stuns going. If uh, Lokodoko gets stuck within the Cataclysm from Jarvan, Leona's just going to be able to drop on her Solar Flare and everything else uh, to be able to keep him without being doing any damage. That'll, that will be a ridiculous chain there. Uh oh, May actually taking a couple of hits from the tower there. Oh no, the Flash Frost goes down on Cloud Templar. The Crystallized Wall as well. The slow uh, Cleaver in addition, but they're not quite going to get the kill. Oh, a lot of damage being done to the jungler there, but unsuccessful in killing him. Yep. Moo Moo had to take the, the lane temporarily so that Rapid Star could go back and get his two Doran's rings. And you know what's interesting? I, I think that would have been a kill if he had uh, exhaust instead of flash there. Mm. That's so, true. So going for the more of the uh, sustainability, the ability to escape from battles or get into them a little bit faster instead of that exhaust means that his ganks are not as strong. And we did see, by the way, main impact cleared out all the creeps, pushed them up on tower when they saw that Lokodoku and Madlife had left, and now they've come back to lane. Bought a few more items. Oh, look at that. Lokodoku again, barely managing to dash away from the Zenith Blade. They're going in after him anyways, though. Are they going to be able to? Nope. Not quite enough damage. Yeah, nice job by Lulu to be able to make sure that she shields a lot of the damage on Lokodoku, meanwhile throwing some Glitter Lances at Mei. Uh, to keep him slowed down and put on some hurt as well. Uh, but May doing a decent job of grabbing some CS under the turret. And it looked like Grace. they saw Mundo in the area, so they thought that he might be coming up to contest the blue buff. And so that's why we saw the bottom laners for MIG go down, go up rather, to that area. But then they realized there was nothing going on, so it's okay. Oh, the double ward in that bush. <laughs> LOL. Well, you want to make sure that the ward stays up uh, as soon as it goes down. So just overlapping the timer a little bit is not too bad. Uh, you're only losing a few extra seconds for a guarantee that you can have the vision. Yep. Level disparity has been evened up by Gung Wu. Meanwhile, he is actually down by about 10 CS. So still a little bit behind Corky, but Corky grabbing that tier of the Goddess is going to be some an item that he's not going to get full advantage of right now. Uh, he's yep. going to need to level that up before he can get uh, his Mana Mune, and then he's going to be doing a ridiculous amount of damage. Oh, they get the stun on Lokodoko. Oh, no. Are they level 6? They're not level 6 yet, but Lokodoko solo and health. Abumu coming in to save the day. Are they going to turn around and do double kill? They might get Lokodoko. Yes, they do. Oh, my God. May and Impact somehow get out alive as well, despite having only about 300 hit points between the two of them total at the end of that. Lokodoko that looking not very pleased at all. Such a beautiful play by Xenix. Uh, who it was. Yeah, impact is SBS. Man. SBS, he was able to jump on, use his Spadaclosm as soon as he hit level 6, and then flash out of it, keeping everyone oh, from MIG the dragon stuck. is so low, but, but now so many reason. Many reason throws down the old. He has his egg form, but Spirit Rush looks like he's going to take out Horror while Cloud Templar. The flash as well gets him out of there. And are they going to be able to get the kill there? We did see an execution. The dragon killed Jarvan in the meantime. What? This game is crazy. And Leona's still stuck behind enemy lines. It, is she going to be caught, or are they just going to go for this dragon? We're going to have to see in a moment, but oh, Rapid Star is actually going for to get a position and flash away. Oh my god, that was awesome. Beautiful play by Zenic Storm with uh, just using all their abilities to the full potential. A little bit of a misjudgment by going for that early dragon. Uh, because MIG is a very low level, they were able to spawn very quickly and all converge on that dragon, uh, making sure that 
they are actually the ones to secure it at 9 minutes 40 seconds. Very nice job by them to convert something that could have been really, really bad uh, into a one for one after the first gank, uh, the failed gank attempt, uh, and then get that dragon after that. Yep. It's a nice contest on the first dragon. Sorry for interrupting you earlier, by the way, but I got a little too excited. Leon is one of my mains, and Sara using her Zenith Blade to escape. It's pretty cool. Um, yep. Not only do you help your position, but you also put a temporary stun on whoever you're uh, yeah. jumping towards. So that prevented Ari from doing the little extra damage, and then Leona was able to flash away. Yeah. And Gunwung going in, doing some damage to SPS. I was noticing, by the way, Gunwung, he actually, it looks like what he's doing is when he's getting to uh, the number, what is it, the, every fourth auto attack? Lands a Mark of the Storm, is that yep. what it is? Yeah. When he gets to that point, he actually uses that auto attack on Corky instead yep. of just glass hitting with it. So and that's then just a little Use the rest of his skill. abilities to get the stun and then just throw on a little bit more auto attack damage exactly. uh, before backing away completely safely. So Ken in a little bit of more fragile champion early on, but able to put on so much hurt uh, if you can avoid the attacks from your opponent and only engage when you get those stuns going on. They have a ward there. Are they going to land any stuns, though? Nope. NYG knows what's going on. Xenix, reading that situation, says, all right, this is warded. I'm just going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, Horo going back to the jungle. Yep. That's all he needs to do. Scared him a little bit. Got a bit better positioning for May and Impact. Looks like we might see a gank on the middle here. The egg is down for many reasons since it was used in the last fight, I believe. Yep. Yeah, should be. It's a four minute cooldown, so. If he gets killed, it's death. But, looks like Luma just goes back to the jungle after all. Yeah, we actually see two Doran Blades on Kennen. Uh, he wanted to make sure he could get that early advantage uh, with the damage yeah. to be able to get these last hits. Also, to, to push SPS out of the lane a little bit, but then he's starting to move towards the Hextech Revolver and most likely up to a World of the Ancients after that. Uh, having Lulu as the support champion, she's got really, really nice uh, ratios for AP. So uh, having the Will of the Ancients on your team is really good for your support in addition to having Ari uh, get the extra benefit as well. And it looks like they were going for a three-on-one gank there. Kenning coming down middle as well as Amumu, but the ward in the bush next to the river showed Anivia what was going on. She's just going to go back and get a ward instead. Anivia, interestingly, going with Boots of Swiftness to get extra speed yep. and a Catalyst instead of starting off with a tier. So a little bit unusual. And when I say unusual, not in a bad way, just not what you usually see on Anivia. Well, the Boots of Swiftness is almost a necessary item for Anivia. She's a very slow champion, and positioning on Anivia is always key. If you can True. get in the right spot to use your Crystallized Wall, that can just do wonders for your team without you actually needing to do any damage yourself. Uh, and then you're able to stay a lot more fragile. Grabbing that Catalyst is going to allow her to, to be a, a lot more uh, sustainable within lane every single time she levels. She's going to get a lot of the health and mana back uh, and just be able to keep going. Meanwhile, Rapid Star and both many reason are getting their blues once again. Pretty much the same timing. These teams have it down to a science, and no one's actually taking the risk to uh, try to engage the enemy when they're going for that blue quite yet. But we might see something different little later on. We'll have to see. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, down at the bottom lane, by the way, we have Jarvan at 101 creep score to Graves' 71. So, oh, hold that thought. A big battle going in. Rapid Star still has one spirit rush left, I think. Actually, I didn't catch the beginning of that. I was looking at the stats. Yep, there's one more Spirit Rush. Could use it on some creeps. Any reason out of mana actually is not quite going to have the mana to finish off of those creeps. Going to have to stay and get some auto attacks on them before probably going back. Yep, but if uh, well, many reason stays in the lane for a little while, he will get the monitor to be able to continue pushing the creep waves uh, as sure necessary. The, uh, Meanwhile, Ari did go back. Finished off that Hextech Revolver, grabbed two wards to make sure she stayed safe against Dr. Mundo's ganks, uh, and then some potions to be able to stay in lane a little bit longer against the uh, Catalyst uh -oh. of Anivia. Gunwoon going in to try and stun SPS. The Valkyrie gets stunned out of the Valkyrie. The ult goes off. The Ignite, is he going to be able to get away? Uses the flash. Oh, the last shuriken. Oh. What? What? That was a beautiful shuriken dodge by SPS, but went back in for one more attack. Loco Doko uh, took getting the last auto attack to die. Hit by a lot of people here, though, as well. Horo looked like he was going to go and try and go top. 
I kept saying what because I, I, Corky was gone. He was away, and then he mm -hmm. walked back up to take one more shot and got within auto attack range of Kennen again to get that last hit. So I was a little bit surprised that he basically sacrificed himself. Ari, nope, was going to go down there, but decides everything's okay. And bottom lane is just going to go ahead and back, go back to lane. Yeah, and real nice shot by Mad Life. Oh. Wow, a little bit of engagement in the middle. Uh, nice job by Mad Life to be able to keep Lokodoko alive, Shush, showing the power of Lulu's ult. Not only did it give him the health to be able to stay almost uh, all the health that he needed to be able to be alive after the fight, but it made sure that uh, Zenic Storm could not dive him. If they did, they would have been stuck under the turret for way too long and would have taken a lot of damage. Yep. Well, Corky does have that Matamune now up at the top lane, yep. so he's going to be in good shape as far as damage. Despite that death, Kennen uh, has actually gone from that Hextech Revolver. And whoa, a lot of people up here at top, they're going to try and turn it around. Cloud Templar looking to ult on all three of them. Oh, Zenix May, but he does manage to snare all three of them. May is going to go down very quickly. Is he going to die, though? No, he's actually not going to die. Is Impact going to die? It's very hard to kill Leona, especially when she has Flash. And here comes SDS coming in. Are they going to turn it around? The Solar Flare lands on that line. The jump off with everything. May, oh, May uses his standard to get away. Impact's going to get away as well. Cloud Templar. Oh, it's ignited the flash. Oh, and the finish off by many reasons. Oh my gosh, three kills. And again, again, Zenix getting away with two or three of their champions at a handful of hit points. That is just so painful for MIG to miss out on a few kills like that. And Dragon is now up, so Zenix Storm could go for it right now. They are very hurt, so they might be making a similar mistake that they did last time. But they are going to go for it. Many reasons dropping the Glacial Storm, trying to keep, uh, who is that? Uh, Gungung away using the Flash Rush. It's keeping out a beautiful Crystallize to keep out even further. A few Shuriken's sure oh, going to go, but nice. it's not enough. They are able to grab the Dragon completely safely. Uh, and able to get back to the turret. That last fight just showed how wow. strong the Zenix team composition is. Oh my Everyone God. was synergizing perfectly. MLG Frost had a good idea of trying to focus down May early on, keep the Jarvan uh, scared to jump in with his ultimate. But as soon as May, uh, SPS got there, they were able to jump on and take out the champions from MLG so quickly that uh, they were able to keep May alive as well as everyone else. So really, yeah. really nice job. Uh, what was that, a three for zero? Three for zero, yeah. Oh, that was so, so cool. Dragon. After taking the, the bottom turret, however, they are going to lose the mid turret because they did have to go back after that dragon, uh, yep. allowing all the spawns from MIG Frost just to push up the mid real quickly. A uh, good decision by MIG as well. Such beautiful play, though, by Xenix. I mean, May at just a sliver of health, ulting to capture one of them and then using his standard to get back out of his own ultimate, basically, yep. to save himself so he didn't actually die there. I mean, just some actual genius, genius moves. I mean, we're seeing some, like, some yellow programmer micro here <laughs> being done by these Xenix players. Oh, and now they're, oh, oh, they're camping this bush. They think that Ari's going to come for her blue. And Ari using Charm just to check the bushes, make sure they don't go in anywhere completely blind. But this is a, a quite an interesting oh. place for Xenix Storm to be sitting at this point. And now, what are they doing? Okay, now they're kind of camping nearby their own blue buff. Yep. Oh, they're waiting for it to come up. All right, this just came up just now. Now they're going for it, but the entire Zenix team is there. They know it. They're back. Oh, oh no, Gunwoo gets caught. Rabbit Star throwing in the orb of deception. And Mubu running into the middle. Does he get his ult off? It looks like he did, but it didn't really have much effect. Slicing Maelstrom doing tons of damage. Is Loco Doku going to be able to get out alive? He is going to go back in. Can Impact get him? No. Is he going to get away? Ah, Loco Doku almost dead. Just barely flashes away from Eclipse before it killed him. Many reasons going to get killed off as well. Cannot escape from Rapid Star. Yeah, this is going to be the first ace nice happening attempt. if they can grab many reason with one extra charm. Oh, wow. But is no, he get away? showing the power oh, of the boots of swiftness. Oh, oh my god. He's going to get away. <laughs> Lightning Rush, is he going to land it? Oh! Oh! Oh my god, almost landed that last uh, shuriken. And that's going to allow MIG to actually counter that and go for the blue of Zenix Storm, able to grab it really quickly. It was a really nice job actually by M Mamumo. He didn't do a whole lot of damage with his ult, but he kept a lot of the champions of Zenix Storm out of the fight long enough that MIG Frost was able to focus down Horo and remove the, remove the tank. Uh, from Zenix Storm, and then yeah. after that he's gone, it's really, really easy to pick off the rest of their champions. Really nice job for them. 
Uh, that's exactly what they needed to bring it back into the game. 26.8K gold for MIG Frost to 26.4. So yeah. very, very even with these guys. Uh, the blue from Xenix Storm was stolen, so for the next three minutes, that's actually going to be in favor of uh, Xenix, or uh, of MIG. But no, Xenix oh, no. is actually going to go and steal the blue, <laughs> getting it once again really even. However, it does get seen by this ward of MIG Frost, so I they know realize. exactly what happens. They got the timer on it as well. I didn't realize that blue never actually got taken during that yep. fight. That's yeah, that's interesting. Because MIG Frost is trying to go for that ace and go and get many reasons, which they very nearly did. Uh, they actually left their own blue up for a little too long uh, and allowed it to be taken by Zenix Storm. Wow, so back and forth. 27k and change for both teams right here. Very interesting very cool. placement from that crystallized wall. If there's actually someone in the, the brush there, they would have been pushed outside the rush into the point where Anivia would have been able to see them and actually fight against them very easily. So many reasons just showing he knows all the intricacies of this champion. Uh, that's the scary thing about giving someone the, the champion they're so comfortable with. But Gung Wu also extremely good with Kennen, uh, able to push this top lane before he's going to most likely meet up in middle. But there is a war there uh, to see if he does actually transition. 165 to 165 as far as the creep score in the top lane. So even. Yeah, all these lanes are relatively even. Ari up by 10. But Anivia's got uh, a little bit more time that she's been spending trying to support her team. Uh, not as many kills, but she's been extremely impactful on the fights that have been going on. I would say that Xenix has had an impact in the fights as well. Ha! Of course. Um, it is a mad life here <laughs> for Korean League of Legends. That's right. SBS is... I think a Korean television nah, company or something. Not like as good that. as OGN. <laughs> so we see Impact is finally grabbed in Oracle, so they're going to be able to clear a lot of the wards. It looks like they're getting ready to uh, be in a position to grab Baron if uh, they do get some sort of advantage. But the thing is, Enix has been making some poor decisions on when to go for these extra objectives. They think they have an advantage and they go for it, but they don't time things perfectly yet, uh, and that's cost them a few extra deaths that they don't really want at this point. Well, I guess you never want deaths, but... <laughs> sometimes you might want deaths, who knows? <laughs> if, it'll, if it'll earn you an objective sometimes. If you're trying to use revive and uh, get that extra That's health. right. Zombie Karthus doesn't mind dying. Yep. So, Xenix is pushing up the middle here. And uh, it's not going to be easy for them to uh, get onto that tower to do any damage to it. MIG clear out creeps very, very quickly. Yeah, this Manamune and Corky is going to be really good for Xenix because he's just going to be able to constantly spam his abilities. Uh, he's not really going to run out of mana anytime soon. So that's going to allow them to have a really strong poke uh, once they start sieging any turrets, which we see happening very soon. A uh, Dragon is now up, so we see MIG Frost going into position. They're going to be able to start this early if they see that they have a slight advantage, uh, but it's a little bit of a dangerous thing to do. Oh, oh. Cloud Templar flashing in, trying to get the bandage toss, but he misses, wasting his summoner spell. Uh, and actually takes an extra briefcase to the face. Oh, there's the Solar Flare. Doesn't get a stun off. Only a slow. Cloud Templar runs in the middle. Uses his ultimate. Rapidstar forced to run away from the fight with his ultimate. Is he going to get back in? He is going to take out Horo. Impact is so low. Running for dear life. Local Joko giving chase. Can SBS and many reasons get any kills? No. Many reason is barely going to flash away for the moment. Probably going to die eventually since they are in enemy territory right now. It looks like this is going to be an ace. They're just tracking him down. Many reason going around is going to get caught by Gunwung as well. But he's going to get Local Doko. Nicely done before dying after the egg form. So it ends up being a five for two. And that means MIG is going to get the dragon as well. Nicely played by MIG. Yeah, that was a beautiful team fight by MIG Frost. They were able to bait with the, the dragon without actually starting it. Uh, Xenix Storm thought they had the advantage and they went in on it, used a lot of their abilities, but they weren't actually able to get as much damage as they would have liked, and they did get ratted quite nicely uh, by MIG Frost. Yep. Very nice play by, uh, by many reason, though. He knew he wasn't, well, I guess he has a chance of surviving because he's always many reason. 
but he didn't have a likely chance of surviving. But the thing is that moving into the enemy territory is buying time for your team. If yeah. they died, if both uh, Horo and Many Reason died immediately there, that would have allowed MIG Frost to go and take Baron at that time. But because they took long enough and the uh, rest of Zenic Storm was able to spawn, it al allowed it so that MIG Frost was only able to take Dragon uh, before they had to move back to their lanes. Yep. Looks like Anivia is setting up to get her brand new blue that just came back up. Yep. And uh, yeah, you're exactly right. Sometimes when you know you're dead, you just gotta stall for time in the long run. We have to clearing up some more creeps here as well. The top. Yeah, we actually see Graves is falling a little bit behind in the CS. Lokodoko is not uh, doing too well in the kill department either. So what yep. uh, we see on uh, May is he's actually going for that Maw of Malmordius. Really, really good item to have against a lot of uh, enemy AP de damage dealers. Uh, which we see out of Kennen and Ari. And both, uh, Lulu is actually doing quite a big contribution to these team fights, throwing those Glitter Lances where she needs to, oh. uh, and keeping her team alive. Trying to catch Cloud Templar out there. And it looks like Zenix may, Zenix, uh, rather the whole team is gonna just take this middle turret as MIG was not quite organized in the middle to defend that. Yep, they saw that both Loco Doco and Gun Gunwung were at the top lane. Uh, so they realized they could push in 5v3 and definitely take out a turret before uh, they were able to recall back and then come to the defense. Well, the global gold is pretty much even here, just separated by, well, I guess a uh, two and a half thousand gold here in favor of MIG. As they do have yep. basically, basically it's those extra few kills that they've gotten and uh, an extra dragon or two. Yeah, those two past team fights going in MIG's favors, making them very confident. They're starting to uh, get their complete oh, no. war coverage up Oh Baron. no! Oh, many reasons walks right into the whole enemy team and pops oh. immediately. The Amumu ult holds them in place as well. It looks like they're just going to get those two kills, catching Leona off guard as well as she tried to kill off the ward. And they say, all right, two champions are down. Let's get Baron. There's nothing they can do to stop us. It looks like the rest of Zenix is going to try and contest this, but I don't know if they're going to be able to do anything about it. They do have Mundo up. He does have Flash because he didn't take... Is his smite up? Yes, his Flash and his smite are up. He might try and steal it here. They're getting vision for him, but it looks like they're just... Oh, no! He goes in trying to go for some kills now after all, but instead he's just going to pop and die and lose any chance of the Baron steal. That was not the best engagement. It looks like Cloud Templar barely survives, almost got executed there. <laughs> yeah, really nice wow. job by Lulu to keep him alive exactly when he needed to. They actually baited it, him in almost uh, by having it so that Amumu was really low on life. Horo jumped in to go for the kill instead of waiting for the Baron steal. Uh, but then yeah, that was... Wild Growth went off and just kept him in a very safe position. So a really I... nice job by MIG Frost. A lot of missteps there from Xenic Storm is going to give the first Baron to MIG, uh, as well as a lot more confidence to do exactly what they want to do in this game. Yeah, stretching that 3k lead to a 6k lead in gold now, and with yep. those kills in addition. I'm a little bit surprised, to be honest, that Xenix engaged on that 3v5, even though there was a couple um, champions that were low on health that they wanted to try and finish off. They're like, all right, well, Baron has lowered these guys' health, so let's see if we can polish them off. Well, turn out in their favor. The thing is, if they could take out a Mumu, then that also takes out the smite from MIG Frost, so it allows any champion oh, to, to use their burst and just possibly get lucky. Uh, but but then if they have so the right decision. If they point. have Mundo on the other side of the wall and the Mumu is gone, then he's definitely going to get the steal, basically. Yep. So that forces MIG Frost to go away. True. Very good point. Both teams have all five champions up now. MIG is just starting to push some of these lanes, trying to take the enemy jungle. Yeah, they want to make sure they get the timers on all the, the jungles, and because they have uh, the Baron buff, they are able to win any sort of open ground 5v5. They've been winning even without that Baron buff, so it's just a little bonus for them to have. Uh, Xanax really needs to make sure they get good positioning in this next fight, or they're going to be falling further and further behind. So what was completely even is now a 7k gold advantage for MIG Frost, as well as control of the map for the next three and a half minutes. Two and a half at this point. Yeah. All right, well, MIG looking to press their advantage, trying to get some damage on the mid turret here, but they've basically got a split push going on here, which is yep. interesting because well, Gunwung, uh, Kennen is a very fast champion, but he doesn't actually have any kind of teleport ability. 
Well, the main so, thing is that MOG doesn't really have any sort of poke going on, so Zenic Storm, even though they don't have the buff, are able to push away uh, the MOG. So they're able to counter Siege very nicely, uh, meaning that MOG Frost needs to do this. Oh, the charm goes off on impact. Damage. Oh, is he going to die immediately? Not quite, not quite. He's got to be a little bit more careful and staying away from that in the future. But MIG is just trying to keep them distracted long enough for Gung Wung to be able to push in here, already taking down two turrets They're just gonna uh, before give meeting up. up with the rest of the team. Sorry about that. They're just going to give up their outer turrets. Corky not making too much of a fight against uh, Cannon down there, and they just decide, okay, well, we've got Ari behind that bush, ready to throw stuff on us. Let's just go ahead and back off. Yep. And they're able to grab the blue once again from Xenic Storm. Dragon is back up. They could go ahead and take Dragon as well if they wanted to. But yeah, they only have uh, another few seconds left on Baron buff, I believe. Or maybe it's another minute. Another minute. I'm sorry, another minute. But uh, Ken is actually able to solo Dragon at the moment while the rest of MIG Frost pushes top lane. If Xenic Storm were to contest this dragon from Kennen, then it would be a free tower or two from Xenic Storm. And that's why uh, Kennen feels so comfortable in grabbing this on his own. Well, this is, I'm, this is why I'm a little bit puzzled by this. I mean, Gunwom doing this kind of splitting thing because it leaves them open to a possible 4v5 if uh, Xenix uh, is able to engage all it, the rest of the It's very hard for Xenix to engage unless many reason gets off a really nice crystallize. Uh, pulling off That's the true. champions from uh, MIG is going to be very difficult when they have Lulu. Lokodoko is able to dash away. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, it's relatively safe. It's just setting up for possibly interesting situations. Yep. But yeah, I mean, MIG, I mean, Xenix has to just kind of play defensively right now regardless since they do have the Baron buff and they do have the general disadvantage. Yep, but now that it's off, uh, it is going to be something that Zenic Storm can contest on uh, the their own red buff to make sure that MIG doesn't have all four buffs of the map. Uh, but we will see what happens with that. Never mind, I, I said what because I thought I saw something and I was like, wait, that's not the item I thought it was. <laughs> it's okay. Anivia is building a Lich Bane, not a Mana Mune. Or Mana Mune. Could be fun. They're both blue swords. Sorry. Or the Sheen, rather, is, is a blue sword. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, MIG just kind of having their way with uh, the jungle of Xenix right now. Yeah, Xenix sees uh, all, a number of the champions in their own jungle, so they're not actually going to contest this red, uh, even though uh, Cannon was up top. Being very, very afraid of the MIG Frost team, even when it is a 5 4 situation like you were yep. talking about. And Baron Buff has worn off as well. And I mean, it's just Cloud Templar's ult. You know, Amumu, he is not. Oh, oh many reasons gets charmed, but got the Crystallized Wall off beforehand. Uh, in any case, what I was going to say is Amumu is considered not to be as strong in the early game, and that's why he maybe hasn't been played as much. But that ultimate. That ult is so, so strong in a team fight, especially if you can snare a few of the enemy team. That yeah. It's very, very, very potent. It's proving to be extremely instrumental in a lot of these team fights, just splitting up the Xenix team. The bruisers that run in to try to go to the back line of MIG Frost uh, get completely cut off, and then they're actually going to focus down a lot faster than they normally would be uh, if the entire 5v5 team was actually fighting all at once. So great job by Cloud Templar to use the full potential of a Amumu uh, and the rest of the team to be fighting along with it. Gunwung is just continuing to push all these towers. Now he's pushing top. I think he's killed three or four towers on a dragon single-handedly right now in the last several minutes while his team has just kind of roamed around. And they have gone back to buy, by the way. Baron is going to be up in another minute, so they're just letting Gunwung do his thing while they go back and pick up more items, make sure they're full on mana and health before a possible fight at Baron, which could be happening very soon. Yep. About 45 seconds left before the next Baron comes up. Uh, so really, MIG is just trying to push up all the different lanes, keep the pressure on. Uh, if they keep Zenic Storm in the base just a little longer than they need it to be, then they're going to be able to take down Dragon or take down Baron very quickly. Once you get up to the 35 minute mark, uh, it only takes a few seconds to actually take down the Baron. So it's something that Zenic Storm needs to react to perfectly if they want to defend against it. So now that it's up, uh, MIG Frost is actually just positioning to be able to. Uh, fight if Xenic Storm comes towards them. They don't want to go for it quite yet. 
Yep, this is where we see the ward clearing game where both teams just trying to wander around and get rid of it. And Claude Templar flashes in, gets hit by the Flash Frost instead. What we tried to do for the Flash Bandage to try and stun the old him, but now it's turning around. Leona jumping in, but there's the old on three or four of MIG. So much damage being done. Can they kill many reasons? Many reasons does go down. SBS forced to Valkyrie away, forced to probably use his flash in a second as well. No, he gets charmed before he can flash. And oh my gosh, Mundo is the only one that escapes. Yeah, that's going to be a very game-changing mistake there for Zenix Storm. Uh, they, they or Cloud Templar missed his first bandage toss after he flashed, which was kind of uh, unfortunate for him. But then the thing is that all of Zenix Storm moved in to allow him to just bandage toss again and then use his ultimate. So while he made a mistake, Zenix Storm didn't capitalize on it and actually kind of threw it back and gave him a little gift uh, to be able to go a little bit more. And it looks like yep. we're experiencing some Another lag. Another bit of lag, but, but just uh, so you guys know, MIG is pushing down the middle lane. They're going to get the middle inhibitor turret. They're going for the middle inhibitor right now as well. Okay, we have returned to the normal vision. Apologies for that. Little moment of lag. They're probably gonna get a second inhibitor out of this as minions are conveniently arriving just now at the top tower. Another thing that I really like nope, about MIG Frost there. is that uh, Mad Life, once the fight has uh, happened for like a little while, once it's, it's starting, to get, starting to get settled, Mad Life is the one that chases down everyone. Using the Glitter Lance from Lulu, uh, she's able to keep the slow on long enough until one of the more damage dealing champions from her team is able to catch up and actually pick off that the final remaining champion. So, really nice job for all of MIG Frost to pretty much know their jobs and go and do them uh, pretty much perfectly. Well, MIG has a definite advantage here. 15,000 gold lead. Xenix is starting to be up against the ropes. They've only lost the one inhibitor, but they have lost their other inhibitor tower. So, uh, basically, if they lose a team fight, they're gonna have two inhibitors down at any point in time. And it's quickly gone, uh, gotten out of control here. MIG at one point was just up 11 kills to eight. I mean, at one point it was six to six, and now they're up 19 kills to eight. Uh, so they're starting to get pretty far ahead. Yep. Uh oh, Horo. No, not quite going to get caught. Another thing I find interesting about the Zenix Storm build is that uh, Mei with Jarvan, he's actually going for more of an assassin type. He's, he keeps jumping into the back lines of MIG Frost to try to take out a lot of the champions. But his build is not very tanky, so we see him going down uh, as one of the first deaths in these fights, uh, pretty much every single recent team fight, and that's mainly because he does oh. not have the sustain. Amumu misses his bandage, but just runs in the middle of them. Gravesol doing a ton of damage. May suicides himself on Loco Doco. Poro looks like he's going to go down. Oh my gosh, everyone getting routed. Mig doesn't even have a champion below half health right now, and. Uh, they're just going to sweep this in. This may be a win here. All five up for MIG, the last defense of Xenix. They've only got two champs alive right now. They are not going to be able to defend. And MIG Frost is even going to get SPS as the rest of their heroes take out the Nexus. GG, MIG. Beautiful play by MIG Frost after the first 10 minutes or so. Uh, Zenix Storm was doing such a nice job yeah, with their 3v3 three and, really well, three really. three and 4v4 engagements. All of them using their, uh, their ultimate abilities in the exact timing they needed to to get the maximum effect. But the thing is, once they got to those five...